Hi everyone, this video is in part to demonstrate my new electronics project, an Arduino-based oscilloscope, and in part to answer a question that I've been wondering about for some time, which is just how clean is the waveform that comes out of the electrical power sources that I use? And obviously this receptacle here is provided by the utility company and I expect to get a pretty clean waveform, but when I don't have access to that, either because the utility power has gone out or because I'm in my car without access to it, I have a couple alternative sources that I use. We have a portable gasoline power generator for home backup power. And for my car, I have this cheap little plug-in inverter. Neither of these solutions would be expected to provide a very clean waveform, certainly not as clean as the utility company. But until now, I've never had the ability to take a look at just how bad or good they actually are. Our generator is a conventional one that relies on the motor spinning at a constant 3600 RPM in order to put out the proper 60 Hertz waveform. You can buy more expensive models that generate DC power and then convert to AC by way of an inverter, and that allows them to put out a much cleaner waveform. But those systems cost more for the power that you get. So if you need more than one or two kilowatts, they can get pretty expensive pretty quickly. So what I have over here is a conventional Westinghouse WGen 7500DF, which is a dual fuel, meaning propane and gasoline generator that's rated for about seven kilowatts continuous. And the stated spec for this model is that the total harmonic distortion, which is the usual measure of how messy the waveform is, will not exceed 23%. And in some ways, that's a lot. A lot of people would tell you that you don't want to exceed about 5% if you're running sensitive electronics. And these days, even your refrigerator probably has a small computer built into it. So there's an argument to be made that almost everything is sensitive electronics these days. But I don't know if that 23% is a conservative worst case number at maximum load, or if I'm really getting about that much distortion most of the time. I have that, these cheap little plug-in inverters that so many people don't think twice about plugging their laptops into aren't even trying to produce a proper sine wave. They're producing what's commonly called a modified sine wave, which is also going to have a bunch of harmonic distortion. And some equipment will be more affected by that distortion than others, and a lot of people seem to have an opinion as to what is and isn't okay, and I don't really know, so I'm not going to go speculating here. But I find it interesting that the manufacturer of this device um, advertises it as being great for CPAP machines and nebulizers, among other things. So they would seem to like you to trust your medical equipment to this inverter. And I don't have a real oscilloscope. I've never needed that kind of high-frequency signal capture. But it was this situation that motivated me to build a little oscilloscope-like device out of an Arduino Mega 2560. And if you didn't arrive at this video by way of my blog, there's a link down in the description to where you can see more of the details of how I built this. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to jump into taking some measurements. So to start off with the utility power, You can see a pretty clean waveform there. I'm setting that into a continuous mode so it'll update the waveform. Let's take a look at the total harmonic distortion. And you can see that according to my calculations, we have a single spike at about 60 hertz, and there's nothing visible on any of the frequencies above that. And these are in units of power, so I've taken the FFT squared, but you can see that I figure something in the neighborhood of 5% total harmonic distortion. So I can save this data to an SD card. This is my garage.
And this is at zero load. I can type in a note. No load. So that writes the data to a micro SD card that's internal to the device, and it's saving this screenshot now with the caption printed below. So let's do a capture now with it under load, and I have here an old Craftsman drill that draws about three amps to act as a small load. The waveform doesn't look too different. Let's see if it comes up any different on the total harmonic distortion. It's about the same, a little more than 5% according to this math. So not too much different as we would expect. I'm going to try it now with a space heater. Hopefully I don't trip the breaker. I'm not sure exactly what else is on this circuit, but I'm applying a 1500 watt load and running it. And the waveform looks pretty clean. Total harmonic distortion is still a little over 5% according to my math. Now in my car with the inverter, we can see that this has a modified sine wave. That's that square wave sort of thing. And that is going to have a much higher total harmonic distortion, uh, which I figure to be about 38%. And I thought at first that I might have been doing the math wrong because modified sine wave can be as good as about 24% or so. But if you look at the sine wave, it stays at zero for you know almost the same amount of time that it's high or low. And other cheap modified sine wave inverters, this portion will be much briefer in comparison to the other. So this is actually a different duty cycle than you would ideally see, and that results in more harmonic distortion than is necessary. So here it is in continuous mode with no load. And my power drill draws more than the 120 watts continuous that this inverter is rated for, but I have here a small fan that I can switch on. And now that's interesting. Under load, the off time is actually a lot shorter than the on time, which is a good behavior. So let's see so it figures about 32 or 33 percent total harmonic distortion so that's a bit better than we saw under no load and I get about 30% total harmonic distortion with this fan set to its lowest setting, and I don't know how much power that draws, but that's pretty good for a modified sine wave inverter. All right, I've got the generator outside now with two extension cords plugged into it, one for each leg. So I'll start this up and things are gonna get a little noisy, 
but I will take a look at how this performs under zero load, under just the power drill, under one space heater and with two space heaters. Figures about 9% total harmonic distortion, so it's not doing as badly as the 23% figure I would have guessed, but this is still at zero level. So let's see what happens if I turn the drill on again. a lot of load for this generator, it doesn't look too different. And it figures a total harmonic distortion of about 8.4%. Let's see now what happens if I turn on a 1500 watt space heater on just one of the two legs of the generator. So it's an unbalanced load. And she got less noise. So that, that high frequency noise that was superimposed on top of the wave before has largely vanished. Although my mass figures a slightly higher total harmonic distortion of 11%. So now I'm going to turn on a second space heater, so another 1500 watts. It's a balanced load because this is on the other leg of the generator. And it still looks kind of distorted. It's not a very good sign shape. But that high frequency noise isn't there. And I figure about 15% total harmonic distortion. Alright, that's the end of this test. I'll get everything packed up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see any more details, please take a look at my blog. And if you would, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks.